So how exactly do you get to orbit? Anyways, I'm going to cover that with today's 101 level class known as Two Minute Tuesday. Let's go! Well for the point. Hey friend, Tori here from Overlook Horizon, and yes, it's back. Today is Two Minute Tuesday, where I cover a topic briefly for two minutes. I don't know why I say it's two minutes. It's never two minutes, but we're going to do it anyways. And I'll dive into how a spacecraft gets into orbit. So just like the good old days, let's put two minutes on the clock and let's dive in. We're gonna do this in Kerbal Space Program. Yes, this is KSP-1 because I like it better. First, let's start with the launch. Rockets need to hit a certain speed and altitude to stay up in space. For Earth, that's about 7.8 kilometers per second or roughly 28,000 kilometers per hour. It's also 17,500 miles per hour. Our mission is to hit that speed to make sure that the rocket doesn't just fall back down to Earth. Now, as we climb, the rocket does this cool thing called a gravity turn. So what's a gravity turn and why do we even need it? Well, basically, it's where the rocket gradually tilts over as it climbs. This is super important because it helps the rocket use fuel more efficiently. By the time we're in the upper atmosphere, most of our thrust is being pushed sideways rather than straight up in the air. This sideways or horizontal speed is what we really need to stay in orbit. Skipping the gravity turn would be like trying to drive a car with a parking brake on. You're just wasting energy and not getting anywhere fast. Now, today I'm aiming for a parking orbit with a 700 kilometer apogee, or apoapsis. That's the highest point in our orbit. An orbit really has two key points, the apogee, or apoapsis, which is the furthest point away from Earth, and the perigee, or periapsis, which is the closest point to Earth. Right now, we're just focused on hitting that 700 kilometer mark known as apogee. Once we hit our apogee, it's time for a circularizing burn. But why do we bother with this? Circularizing burn changes our orbit from an oval shape to a nice even circle. This makes sure our distance from Earth stays constant, which is great for a lot of satellites. Do we always need to do this? No, not necessarily. Some missions might be fine with an elliptical orbit, like certain Earth observation satellites. But for others, like communication satellites, a circular orbit is usually ideal. Now, sometimes the spacecraft does the actual circularizing burn, but today we're going to do that with our upper stage of this Mach Falcon 9 rocket. So to do that, we're going to fire our engines at Apogee. But why do we fire our engines at Apogee to circularize? That's a good question. It's all about efficiency. At Apogee, we're moving the slowest, so a small boost here can have a really big effect on our orbit's shape. It's the best way to get the job done without wasting fuel. All right, now we've got our circular orbit. Orbits are all about balance. Gravity pulls the rocket towards Earth, and the rocket's speed tries to fling it out into space. When these forces balance out, you get a stable orbit. It's like spinning around with a ball on a string. If you spin too slowly, it's gonna fall down. If you spin too fast, it's probably gonna fly out of your hand and fly away. Okay, time to deploy our payload. In real life missions, this is where we release satellites. These can do everything from beaming internet down to Earth like Starlink, to snapping pictures of weather patterns, to exploring deep space. Here, I'm just trying to make sure my satellite is safely on its way. So next up, I'm gonna deorbit the second stage. To get back down, we need to do a retrograde burn. Basically, we're gonna fire the engines in the complete opposite direction to slow ourselves down. This reduces speed, and it lowers our orbit until we re-enter the atmosphere. During the retrograde burn, you'll see our orbit's perigee drop into the atmosphere. This is crucial for a safe entry. We have to time this burn just right. If it's too shallow, we could skip off the atmosphere and head right back out into space. If it's too steep and we had crew on board, we could burn up or crash too hard. It's not a big deal if that's what you're trying to do, is burn up the second stage of an expended rocket. But if you have crew on board, uh, this is less than ideal. Now, re-entry is one of the trickiest parts. The vehicle faces intense heat and friction, so engineers use heat shields to protect a crewed spacecraft during this fiery descent. In the game here, you can see the flames and the effects as we re-enter. This is where things really get exciting and a bit dangerous. Now, the second stage of my Falcon 9 rocket here is supposed to burn up on re-entry, but hey, uh, it's Kerbal, and sometimes things go a little bit differently. <laughs> As you can see, our second stage survived re-entry, and it crash-landed 
into the ground. It's not exactly what SpaceX would aim for, but whatever, it makes for a good laugh. Now, you might wonder, does the Falcon 9 second stage always do a deorbit burn? Uh, no, not every time. It depends on the mission. For some missions, the second stage stays in a higher orbit and eventually falls back to Earth on its own. For lower Earth orbits, a controlled deorbit burn can ensure that it comes down safely and doesn't add to space junk. So there you have it. How'd we do? Did we hit it? Did we get two minutes? Did I get it? Did I get it? I don't know. Did I get There's nobody over there. <laughs> well, we covered how rockets get into orbit, why we do a gravity turn, and the reason we do circularizing burns. Space is a pretty wild place, and every mission has its own quirks and challenges, but if you had fun here today and maybe you learned something new, maybe hit the like button. Consider subscribing. I'll try to do more of these. Maybe next time we'll get it down to two minutes. I wouldn't count on it, though. Well, that's going to do it for me. My name's Tori. This is Overlook Horizon. I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye. Once we hit our apogee, it's time for a circular... It's time for a circular... It's time for a circular... What? Wait. What? 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 Okay. Once we hit our apogee, it's time for a circularization. Cir circularization. Cir <laughs> it's time for a circularizing.